and welcome back everybody once again to ftb pyramid re <laughs> remastered re, re reborn reborn that's what it is reborn reborn <laughs> uh, yes yes that's what it's called i am tj the obscure with you last episode we uh well last episode i just sucked <laughs> it's just terrible you could definitely tell that uh, one i haven't played modded in a long time but two i just don't have a lot of experience with it in general and this is the first kind of just purely survival based world that i've played in in a few years at least probably something like that so i'm just trying to get back in the groove of things and trying to figure out the various mods and whatnot and after both the grinders last episode just just failed on me i realized that i need to take some time to familiarize myself with more of the mods and what they have to offer and stuff and uh, I think I may have gotten a little little carried away with that I've done a lot of stuff but I'm gonna try to walk you through all of the things that I've done so we're just gonna kind of take a look at everything I tore down the the spawner that I had made and set up this one using mob fans and stone spikes and overall it works pretty well but I know that we can make it even better. Uh, I do kind of like the way that it looks. Like there's like a little happy face. It kind of looks like a fish, to be honest. But uh, basically it's, you know, a bunch of cursed earth. Which, yes, you can spread cursed earth on dirt uh, with the mob fans. And then set up with the iron spikes uh, back there and it pretty much just blows the mobs directly into the spikes like a so nice little demonstration for you there kills the mobs collects their items in a hopper and yes there is that that grander uh, this enderman is here just because I trapped him in something called jailers jailer something or other jailer's module and what it does is it pretty much prevents mobs from despawning and my goal is to hopefully set up a enderman farm uh, which we can eventually do using the mob duplicator but for that i need emerald and i need nether wart as well so that's that's going to take a while i'm not entirely sure how to get nether wart at this point uh, I guess we can try and figure it out. It looks like uh, Batania does offer a lot of ways to get some pretty useful items. Also, the Atomic Reconstructor might be a, a possible way to go, but we don't have mushrooms either. And, uh, yeah, that's not going to help us out either. You can see I have a jetpack now. And I also have a mining drill, which I thought was faster, but it's seems to be about as fast as an iron pick once we upgraded it should be a bit faster but yeah I started trying to play around with um, item pipes so that I could start automating things and start making the storage more efficient but you know, it doesn't seem like there's a really good option for us at this point uh, there are these guys but we can't make those without hardened glass and for that we need lead and then there are the ones that i'm looking at right now i forget what they're for it's it's these ones from extra utilities um i don't know where the actual pipes are the, the actual pipes that uh this is the filter there it is the tra the transfer pipe these are really easy to make but in order to get them to work you need to use the transfer node which i can make that one that one i think uh, will take stuff out of things, but then you also need to get the, uh, it's the receiver, I think. Um, no, I'm not seeing it now. Gosh, I did not want to spend just minutes in my inventory. People, I should have had this better planned out. Where is the extra utilities? Boom, that one. The retrieval node. Retrieval node. And for that, we need emeralds, which I don't have. So, uh, there are some other items. I'm fairly certain that with the ender utilities, you can set up automated ways of transferring items. 
Um, and it seems like it would actually be pretty cool, but a lot of this stuff requires materials that we don't have, and it's also just a mod that I haven't spent much time on. Uh, there are some things that can transfer items, but they're kind of a pain to use. This is what I've been using thus far, the item allocator. And basically it will input uh, and output items from all sides. So I've been using that to, to start setting up some kind of automation, but you see I'm still using, still using hoppers. Uh, because, first of all, these are kind of, kind of expensive to make. And hoppers just make a lot more sense, uh, at least starting off here. We have a fluid transposer, uh, which I haven't really done much with that. I did use it to get the the nether brick and whatnot, but one of the big things that's been holding me back is lava. In order to make the nether brick in the fluid transposer, I I had to use the one bucket of lava that I had thinking that, oh, we'll be able to make the Magma Crucible, uh, I think is what I was going for. I was like, yeah, we just need some nether brick. I could make everything else. But I didn't realize that this one here requires an Electrum ingot. I thought it was gold. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not the case. And to get Electrum, oh, we need silver and gold and an induction furnace or an arc furnace or any one of those. And I don't have access to silver yet. Uh, so I have no lava at this point, And that has really kind of handicapped me in terms of building certain kinds of engines and getting certain kinds of materials like obsidian. Not a smart decision to use my only bucket of lava. But at the time, I thought I was going to be able to, to make that. Um, have pulverizer which uh, allowed me to get my hands on some nickel, thankfully, and with that we were able to make some constant, constant, constant something or other. Uh, this stuff, this stuff. And with that, I can eventually make a... Ba -ba 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 -ba, where's it at? Um, oh, it is... No, not that. Did I pass it up? I think I passed it up. The centrifugal separator. And with that, we can use it to separate the magma cream into blaze powder. And via the blaze powder and blaze rods, we can start getting our hands on some lava. Uh, so that's definitely one of my goals this episode is to set all of that up. But yeah, the pulverizer will take iron ore and crush it into two pieces of iron powder, I think is what it's called. This stuff, pulverized iron. And then you get a chance of getting some nickel as well. An electric furnace. Uh, mainly I've just been taking the iron and throwing it in there just so we have a nice nice big supply of it. Uh, hopefully it starts cooking up some tin because I know that we're short on tin. A lot of this stuff is being powered, well, it's being powered by uh, the industrial craft stuff. But, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, you know, I was thinking back, like when I played modded, what, what exactly did I focus on? Mainly I played like combat type mods and adventure type mods. Um, oh man, I'm trying to remember the name of one of them. It was one of the earlier mods that, that was out there, and it was about like traveling to different dimensions, and there were a lot of really, really interesting, unique mobs and stuff. I can't remember the name of it. And then there's the Twilight Forest mod and the Divine RPG mod. So that was more my kind of stuff. In terms of, you know, this kind of automated, energy-based uh, stuff, pretty much Industrial Craft was the only one that I ever played around with. So this is what I have the most knowledge of. Uh, forestry, I never really got into... You know, even build craft besides the build craft pipes like and when I was thinking back like the only thing I really remember doing is setting up a giant quarry and just automating a bunch of stuff uh, using predominantly industrial craft things I went the route of solar power I remember when I played there were like upgrades to the solar solar panels and you could get one that would essentially give you like infinite energy that does not seem to be in the pack anymore. 
Probably because it was way too overpowered. Uh, but for now, this is keeping most of my energy needs, at least for all of these machines, uh, nice and supplied. Got some bat boxes. I just recharged my uh, jetpack. But clearly, clearly we need we need more energy. <laughs> Maybe it's not going as well as I thought it would. Um, what else? What else do we have? I've set up a recycler because I was starting to feel like the only way that we were able to uh, going to be able to get our hands on certain items was through scrap. So this is actually fully automated at this point. Uh, I put junk into this box, into this chest, goes through the hopper, into the recycler, the recycler cooks it up, the recycler is connected to this bat box. It goes into the chest, uh, into the item allocator, which takes it out and puts it into the scrap box. Um, or I'm sorry, puts it into the auto crafter. And so I put the recipe in to make, make the scrap box and it just pretty much automates all of that for us. And it doesn't seem to require much energy either. Uh, thankfully, I started playing around with, this is the method of getting energy for extra utilities, and I'm not sure I really understand it at this point. These are, these are solar panels, and they, it operates off of grid power, so rather than having something like a, like a battery box, like a bat box that Industrial Craft has, there's just, we just have like a grid, you know, think of it like the cloud and all of our energy goes up into the cloud and then we can use the energy. But again, I, I set up this and I set up some kind of machine and I could not figure out for the life of me how to, how to get it to work. So we're going to need to keep working on that. Oh, that's so loud, so loud. Uh, what else? I have a blast furnace so that I can start making steel and uh, that's an electric heater. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here to really show you. This I just set up. I had seen it a, f a few times and it really intrigued me because we have tons of gunpowder. This is the explosive generator. Uh, and I figured why not give it a go. <clears throat> I set it up. Originally my plan was to <laughs> was to put it in the grinder <clears throat> I was just going to set up a bunch of generators underneath here and have item filters bringing the gunpowder down and just have tons of energy. But as soon as I set it up, like things started exploding and it scared the crap out of me. So I decided to put it off on its own little island over here. Uh, and essentially it does explode every once in a while, but it seems to give us a, a, a lot of energy for a very little cost. Um, and in fact, if we crafted TNT here, the TNT would give us even more power. But it was getting so annoying that I decided to put a sound muffler just so I wouldn't have to listen to it. I should probably do the same thing with my grinder over there. This is some uh, basic wiring <coughs> that we can use to transfer redstone power, uh, redstone flux. This is the wiring for the uh, industrial craft things. And I didn't even know that this was available because otherwise I would start automating a lot of this other stuff. I'm also not sure if the redstone uh, wiring will work on like forestry engines or forestry machines or not. So Coke oven, I mainly used it to get some creosote uh, oil so that I could make something. I kind of, kind of forgot what I was making. And this is immersive, immersive engineering. It, the overall concept of the mod sounds cool. It's like big structures and it's supposed to, you know, it's not just like a little machine that does all this stuff, but it's supposed to be a bit more immersive, I guess, hence the name. So I built everything, but then realized that I cannot create the uh, low voltage, low voltage something or other. Oh, where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? Do, 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 do. I feel like it should be right there. There it is. There it is. We need lead, and there's a lot of things that we need lead for. Um, it's, I find it funny that I got nickel before I got lead, but yeah, we need we need lead to make a lot of various like stuff like the item transport pipes, uh, stuff to store energy for this, and yeah, so that's really all I've done with the immersive engineering thus far. I set up just a bunch of forestry machines to see if I could start to figure out how all of this works and whatnot. So we have a carpenter 
and I was making paper so that I could make some books, uh, mainly so that I could create the mob crusher so that we could start setting up some better mob farms. Uh, and I'll show that to you here in a second. We have peat fired engines. Uh, for the longest time, I was using the clockwork engines, which here, there's one over here. Basically, to get power, you have to just click it. And so if you can imagine how the last few days have been for me, I've just been running around clicking these various engines because I didn't think I was able to get peat. I didn't know you could do it manually. I thought you had to set up one of these farms. Uh, the thermionic fabricator, which we mainly use to make these electron t tubes, which have various purposes. The squeezer, I've been putting apples in there to make uh, fruit juice, I think is what it's called, and then using the fruit juice to make biomass because my original plan was to use the biomass engine, I think is what it's called, the biogas engine, um, but we don't have any lava, so we wouldn't be able to use it anyways. That's the machine that I was trying to use for the extra utilities, but again, I don't know how that whole grid power thing works. Uh, automated tree farm, I can't remember if I had that last episode or not, but it will pretty much just, you know, cut down trees and collect saplings and wood and apples and all that lovely stuff. What are you doing out here, Mr. Chicken? You're not supposed to be out here. Yeah, tons and tons of chickens. Uh, this is a, oh gosh, what is this? I use it to get, it's like a charcoal pit, I think is what it's called. And basically you craft these decorative wood piles. You cover all of this up, um, you know, completely so that everything is covered except this one block. And then you light it on fire, cover it up, and it will create, I forget what I was using that for, maybe ash or something. And this is my my peat farm which this was one of the last things that I did I did this just last night because I figured out that hey I can do this manually uh, and the peat actually is a decent source of energy early game for for the forestry engines this is a multi farm for forestry and basically you can set it up to automate farming and you can do multiple farms at once so I could have a peat farm and a tree farm and a wheat farm and so on and so forth but uh, I can't seem to figure out how to use it. It says our main problem is that there's no fertilizer. So I was like, okay, well, that should be easy to get. But the fertilizer for forestry, I mean, there's other fertilizers, but I'm guessing they won't work. I'm not entirely sure. Fertilizer for forestry requires appetite, which we do not have. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how or when we get that. It seems like most things that you get via completing objectives, you can end up making in the resource generator. So I'm guessing that we get it that way. Just a basic, basic farm. Nothing, oh gosh, nothing too special there. Um, lots of chickens, clearly. And I may need to start trying to clean this up. I was farming chickens to get feathers to make upgrades for the mob fans. This is another somewhat automated process except for item collection uh, so that I can produce latex, which is similar to, to rubber. And we have a water condensator, which essentially collects water for us, uh, connected to, to some fluid ducts, which go into a tank. The tank then feeds into the latex processing unit because it needs water. We have a peat engine to give it power. We have a block placer. So if I put some wood in there, it'll it'll put the wood down. The tree fluid extractors will extract the latex. Uh, latex gets transported here and it crafts us this tiny dry rubber, which we can then craft into uh, our tiny dry latex rubber, which we can then craft into something, something else. <laughs> But eventually you get it into plastic, and that's what I've been using for most of my uh, most of my wiring and whatnot. I've made all kinds of machines and just haven't been able to use them or haven't figured out how to use them. I have the Mob Slaughter Factory, which kills mobs, but doesn't collect items or anything. It, co it collects pink slime instead, which seems like it could be useful. 
Uh, I was thinking this might be a way for transporting items, the the inserter from Ender Utilities, but I wasn't able to figure out how it works quite yet. And I thought this would be a way to transfer and charge uh, Redstone Flux, the accumulator, but yeah, because that's, that's, you know, my two biggest, biggest problems are, at this point are that, uh, one, I don't have any way to store Redstone Power, red, Redstone Flux. Um, I do have uh, the ability to store the EU, but it's not it's not great, right? We need to upgrade these bat boxes, which I think I think uh, the next step up is the CESU, and that requires bronze, which we have advanced RE batteries. But again, it requires lead. So many things require lead. I wonder if we could just skip straight to an MFE. No, we need the energy crystals, which we get how? Exactly. Crushed diamond and redstone. Well, I think we'll be able to do that fairly soon because we should be getting diamond uh, here as far as I know. I would also like to automate these. Um... Clearly, I need to empty that chest out and just, you know, figure out a better way to transfer and store items and transfer and store power as well so that we can start truly automating some of this stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty much it. You can see I'm, you know, looking okay as far as resources go. Uh, minus the lava, minus the lava. I have been using my scrap boxes to try to get, you know, those those rare rare items. Um, so we have four whole stacks here, and using other scrap boxes, that's how I got access to the tin ore and the iron ore. So it seems to be fairly worth it. I've gotten steak, soul sand. Uh, I have gotten. A bunch of these cans, grass blocks, netherrack. So some pretty pretty useful things. Um, but let's go ahead. I, I, for whatever reason, oh gosh. Oh man. Okay, chicken, whatever. You hang out there. I love, I love unwrapping these, even though it's, it's like, it's like Secret Santa, you know, most of the, most of the presents are crap, but eventually, occasionally somebody buys that $500 iPod or whatever and, um, <laughs> Yeah, so we can see uh, these mini batteries. I'm not entirely sure what use they have or if they're useful at all. Um, you know, I should probably be doing this next to our little junk thing so that we can put things up. Ooh, what are you? What are you? Pulverized copper. Nothing too great. It's mainly wooden hose. That's mainly what it is. Oh, what are you? I don't think I've seen you before. Just rubber. Ooh, can we... Because we don't get access to rubber for, for a while. Um, okay, what's the difference between a charge pad and a bat box? They seem to be almost identical. And that even says bat box. So why on earth would you want to make that? I'll have to look that up, I suppose. Uh, anything else that we could make with this rubber sheet? No, I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like. I was thinking that we could maybe put it into our little resource generator, and we would get some stuff that way. Um, but that does not appear to be the case. Goodbye, dirt, pulverized iron. Nothing that we need. Uh, oh, there's a piece of copper ore there. That's actually quite useful because uh, we can double the amount of ores that we get by using the pulverizer. So we will probably want to use that. And let me go ahead and stick up some of this junk. I think that's my first slime ball. Although I'm fairly certain that I did have the capability to make that. Unfortunately, people are doing some construction outside of my apartment, so I'm going to have to stop recording at this point. I'm going to work on automating things, and uh, then I'll show you 
show you the rest of of what I have set up in the Nether. It's 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 not much, but yeah. So, anyways, I'll be I'll be right back with you. Actually, first, let's go ahead and drop off the objectives that I've managed to create. We have the induction furnace um, from Industrial Craft, which is probably the most complicated thing I've had to make at this point. Uh, where are you, Mr. Induction Furnace? There it is. Copper, advanced machine casing. That's why I had to make the pulverizer and the compressor uh, and those kinds of things. But with this stuff, we can start to make some pretty decent nano armor, I think. And then we also have the greenhouse fan, which is from forestry. I found all of the forestry stuff is just, it's been difficult to get my hands on. Uh, where are you at? Mr. Greenhouse fan, the greenhouse block. There we go. So the 10 electron tubes, which we make in the thermionic fabricator or whatever. Iron ingots, the greenhouse block, which I needed ash for. And I also needed wood pulp. Which the ash you can get from uh, doing something. I forget what now. <laughs> oh, I got, I got the ash from the charcoal pit, I think. And then the... The... Wood pulp you get in the carpenter, so it took a while to, to make both of these things, but thankfully we have them now. That's the next one in line. I don't think it's going to give us anything too great, uh, but I think the induction furnace gives us access to diamond, maybe? Although we're not, we're not getting our rewards here. There we go. Oh no, that, that's the one that gives us the lead. Okay. Rice seeds and rubber tree saplings as well, <clears throat> which I don't, these aren't as necessary because I have the latex processing factory, which actually seems to work pretty darn well. But the lead, the lead is definitely uh, something that we want at this point. Okay, let's do the induction furnace and see what that gets us. I don't know where we're at exactly as far as the objectives go. Come on, you could do it, game. You could do it. There we go. Nether quartz. Oh, black quartz is going to allow me to get into actually additions, um, which has lasers and all kinds of uh, pretty cool stuff. So that's that's useful. I, I feel like there was something that I really wanted to make with actually additions, but I can't think of what it is now. Nothing too great there. Anyways, we have completed that. How many how many objectives does that make exactly? We have the furnace generator, the basic drawer. Uh, I think these turn green whenever we've completed them, right? Are we over here now? We have the greenhouse fan and we have the induction furnace. So we're done with one whole side. That's pretty nice. RF, which honestly with a few of those explosive generators, this should be fairly easy to take care of. What is that? Is that three, 3 million or 30 million? It's 30 million RF. Yeah, yeah, we'll just hook up like 10 of those explosive generators. Bam, we should be should be done fairly quickly. Uh, <laughs> and crafting grid. We need mushrooms for that. Not sure where we're going to get mushrooms, but biomass, which I actually, I've started making the biomass, but I haven't really done anything with it yet. And shock absorber. So anyways, I'm going to get started on automating things, making use of this lead is definitely something that we need to do. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with you here momentarily. All right, once again, you know, I haven't done anything, but I've just been finishing opening all these scrap boxes and I just got super lucky. I got an emerald, which is another thing that I've been lacking. I 
I would have gotten them pretty soon because one thing that I've done is I've um, trapped a zombie villager right here. And I was going to cure the zombie villager, but that would, would require getting access to blaze rods, which again, we're not too far away from so that I can make some weakness potions. Uh, but we don't even need to do that at this point because we now have our very own emerald. And let's go ahead and stick you in there for now, I think, because we're going to want lots of you. Uh, it's actually taken a lot more time than I thought it would. Same thing there, but I've, I now have gold ore. I, have, I think I have like all the, well, not all the ores, but some of the ores. Oh, man, seeing that emerald pop out, because that's honestly why I set this whole thing up in the first place. I think to get that and maybe blaze powder so that I could start trying to get some lava. But seeing that emerald pop out, that was that just made my day, you guys. All right. Anyways, I think I think we're good. All that junk can just despawn. And now, now it is actually time to start trying to automate some of this stuff, and uh, you know, move on to the next goal. Which at this point, where are we at? Where are we at? We did, we did the induction furnace, so it looks like the shock absorber is next, and from that we get silver and diamonds. So how do you make the shock absorber exactly? Shock absorber, we need to get some void crystals, advanced coil, and obsidian. So it looks like we need to get, uh, start dabbling in the actually additions, which again, I don't really know much about it. <clears throat> You're going to hear me say that so many times. But uh, it looks like our first step will be getting hold of lava so that we can start making obsidian. So, anyways, <laughs> I think that's the last time I'm going to check in with you, and then I will actually be back once I've, once I've, once I've accomplished something. Not sure what, but I'm going to try to accomplish something. <laughs> 